Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about the 14 types of paintball players. Oh yes, everything from those trash talkers to the ones who false report the tryhards when they get salty for losing. Before we get into it though, today's video is sponsored by Abaca. Abaca makes VR accessories that are unique and streamlined. They have head straps with built-in battery packs and rechargeable controller grip covers that let you enjoy your VR for longer. But now they've come out with this really innovative new product that I'm excited to share, the CyberCore VR Charging Station. I got my hands on one and I love it. It's universally designed for any VR headset and provides simultaneous simultaneous charging for all of your VR devices and other electronics. It has magnetic charging capabilities, which I've never seen before. Basically, you don't have to worry about yanking any cords or being rough with them because they're attached with the provided magnets. The inside is a hidden controller charging bay and it has an adjustable light mode. It's probably the coolest thing in my entire house, to be honest. I always struggle to find places to plug things into charge, so having an all-in-one station that's specifically set up for VR and doubles as a stand for it, Yes, please. If you want to check out the CyberCore Charging Station or any of the other Abaca products in their lineup, be sure to click on the link in the description below. Now let's get started talking about these 14 types of paintball players. Number one, the day one player. You can always tell when it's someone's first day in rec room, even without seeing the fact that their name is Clueless Clam 4512 with a level one badge beside it. The signs are all too obvious. They don't know how to aim. You see them running right into the open area in Homestead like a clueless sheep, staring blindly into a pack of ferocious wolves, and they keep trying to steal the flag even though the whole blue team is guarding it. It's painful to watch. We all remember our first day in paintball though, and so despite them making it nearly impossible for your team to win, you just have to sigh and think to yourself, ah, man, I was there once. I wonder if everyone was face palming at my skill issues back then too. Number two, the leaderboard grinder. The leaderboard grinders are a rare breed of paintball player. They can play hours of this rec room original a day to gain fame and notoriety by being at the top of a leaderboard that gives no other rewards than the satisfaction of their name appearing in simple black font on a tacky yellow sign. Leaderboard grinders are savage. You are nothing but a number to them, which you realize as they take you out from halfway across the map. You barely have a chance to utter the words, it's not fair, as you die for the seventh time in a row. You can feel your blood pressure rising as the steady hand of the tryhard pulls the trigger yet again Again, and you hear that ding sound effect signaling your death. At some point you start realizing that it's not that you suck, you're pretty decent at paintball. You just never stood a chance against a player who spends most of their waking hours perfecting their craft and annihilating innocent kids in a random free VR game. Leaderboard grinders, mad respect. You've won nothing for being excellent except probably a stack of false reports from the next stereotype here. Number three, the salty false reporters. There are people who can be taken down in paintball and laugh it off. I dare say that's most of us actually. I've even gone against some pretty sweaty players myself. I hate that term, sweaty players, but can't deny that it's an expression nonetheless. And I have never thought to resort to putting in a report. This is because reporting a player is supposed to be reserved for the utmost appalling offenses, not tattling to coach because someone is beating you in the game. Regardless, these people exist. You'll see them have an infant-like outburst for it being not fair that they died yet again, and then suddenly their eyes glaze over as their watch menu comes out and you see furious typing. It's obvious what they're doing and innocent bystanders tend to just ignore it, shrug, and continue on with the game. After all, life isn't fair and paintball in rec room is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to that fundamental life lesson. But tell that to little 12 year old Timmy who is learning these painful epiphanies about life due to a random tryhard they encountered. These things are never pretty to witness. And if you're a false reporter, please stop. It's a waste of time for everyone, moderators especially. Number four, teleporters. Teleporters confuse people. I used to be one of those people who felt intimidated by them. The zigzagging, the unpredictable nature of someone moving at a different speed than the other players, and the sheer disdain they seem to have for traveling by foot made me feel unnerved. I now realize it was a me problem. My own anxiety for seeing something different. Self-reflection is so important, I'm learning. Anyway, the teleporters get a bad rep. People accuse them of being hackers, cheaters, of gaming the system. I think those people need to try teleporting for a hot minute and report back on their findings. There's a cooldown. It's not easy. Aiming and shooting a paint pistol while trying to aim where to place your avatar is a multitasking nightmare. Now add into the fact that everyone in the lobby hates you on site because you're different. I think if anything, we need a new campaign in Rec Room for welcoming teleporters with open arms. The odds are they're just motion sick from regular walking in VR. They're not trying to make our lives difficult. Just aim where you think they're going and they actually have a strong disadvantage. Number five, the splatter gun menace. The splatter gun menace makes everybody shake their head. You can hear the music from drive-in blasting. You're in the zone, avoiding those landmines people play strategically around the map while seeing the giant drive-in theater movie playing. It came from the bog. Indeed it did. That 1987 black and white classic movie. You almost want to pull up a lawn chair, turn on your radio, and tune in because the vibe's so peaceful. And then you hear it. 
the telltale sign of a splattergun menace gone rogue. They have found their dream weapon, and it's not a quiet one. Instead of calmly executing hits with small, intentional bursts, they decide to hold down the trigger button incessantly and spray an obnoxious amount of paint at anyone who even glances in their direction. It doesn't seem to matter to the holder of this underpowered gun that there's barely any damage being dealt. All they care about is hearing themselves run amok and annoy everyone by legging the game with their constant barrage of paint splatters. Inevitably, as it happens every single time, someone will come up behind them, take them out, and throw that godforsaken gun in a shrub so no one else can take over the unsolicited job of splatter gun menace. Number six, the reckless flag fetcher. I'm guilty of being the stereotype. You know the one, they're weaving in and out of sight with no other focus on their mind than bringing that sweet, sweet flag home to rest. The feeling you get when you drop the flag in your home base, accompanied by the praises of your teammates, leads to an endorphin rush that's unparalleled. Unfortunately, as a reckless flag fetcher, that's all you tend to think about. Lose sight of what your teammates are doing, who just spawned near the flag on the opposing team, or your own well-being in general. It's like you're living with horse blinders on. The good news is that one in 20 times Times, being reckless pays off and you can finally score that point. I mean, as they say, a broken clock is still right twice a day. Before we continue on with the video, just a quick reminder that the next time you're in Rec Room, be sure to use code Terra in the game. You can enter the code in your watch before making purchases or just head over to my profile and hit that support button. Doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me keep making content for you guys. All right, let's get back to these types of paintball players. Sorry for the detour. Number seven, the landmine lurker. The landmine lurker in drive-in can be an absolute tyrant. If you're clever, you know that you can't simply grab the flag in Sunset Cinema. Oh no, there's a dance, timing, scouting, and some level of savviness involved. Unless you want to grab the flag and immediately blow up, that is. However, if you don't play this map often or you're not paying attention and forget, you'll stumble in to capture the flag and hear an ominous click before realizing you've made a terrible, terrible mistake. Landmine lurkers live for that notification that without shooting their gun, they took someone out. That's why they place them anywhere they can, on cars, near shrubs, and even next to guns, just waiting for that unsuspecting player to arrive. Number eight the savvy sniper. If I had mad respect for anyone on this list, it's the snipers. They aren't even interested in capturing the flag, winning, or socializing with anyone. But if you get anywhere close to their base or even exist from the opposite side of the map, they have you in their sight and you will be going down. I've been there so many times. You think no one is watching as you creep closer and closer to the flag. It's practically within reach, rippling in the wind gloriously. And then, ding, you're out. You don't even know where you got shot from until you look up and see them in their vantage point, practically grinning at the satisfaction of another perfect shot. Number nine, the grenade god. The grenade experts are extremely annoying if you're on the receiving end of a well-timed throw. However, I think we can appreciate that it's also like watching a really talented artist put the final touches on a painting or seeing a football star get that touchdown. Anyone who's really good at their craft is transfixing to watch. Grenade gods are no different. They know just how long to cook the grenade and just the perfect hand movement to hurl it in your general direction for maximum effect. Once you're down, it's hard to be mad. You almost wanna clap in appreciation for the talent that it takes. Number 10, the daily challenge player. Ah, uh, the people who don't care about paintball but do care about their challenges tab. You'll play a couple games, see them run around, clearly not excited to be there. And after the round is over, you hear a huge sigh of relief as you turn and see them opening their box. Finally, got my daily challenge. They grumble about getting some dress they will never wear and then poof, they've disappeared into the wind perhaps gone back to 3D charades, or to finish that room they were building, never to be seen again until the next daily challenge entails completing two rounds of capture the flag and yep, you guessed it, paintball. Number 11, the one who can't aim. Oh, those poor players who can't aim. All you see around your head is shots being fired repeatedly, but nothing is landing. At first you're nervous because you're almost at the flag and they're closing in on you. Your heart is racing, so you try to run a little faster, but then you realize, there's no point in being nervous. You're going up against someone who can't aim a gun, and doesn't realize how to tilt their weapon to even remotely hit you. Splatters continue to fly here and there, but no damage is happening. It's actually a beautiful thing. Someday they will develop mad skills and turn into a leaderboard grinder, a caterpillar to a proverbial butterfly. But for now, they're only a menace to themselves. Number 12, the trash talker. Trash talkers need to get a reality check. After all, what is the point of screaming obscenities at someone after they take you out or vice versa in a simple animated game? Maybe it's somewhat cathartic for them to just scream at anyone at anything, but I've personally always found getting super upset to be more nerve wracking than rewarding. That's why the last time that I ran into a trash talker, who was actually on my team surprisingly, yet kept calling me names every time I'd die, I was super taken aback. For some reason, these players always sound suspiciously young, like they just learned the meaning of a new swear word and are keen to spew it everywhere. In any case, these people make me so thankful that the mute button exists. I'll still see their mouth moving incessantly, but 
Now I can go back to enjoying the game in peace without hearing constant angry outbursts that, let's face it, are completely unnecessary to begin with. Number 13, Spawn Campers. Spawn Campers are the bane of everyone's existence. They think it's cute to hide out near where you respawn, and kill you yet again. Racking up kills in a paintball match this way is super frowned upon. If you employ this tactic, you'll probably find yourself making enemies faster than you can say spillway. You might even find yourself reported for cheating, so just don't do it. Number 14, the non-competitive player. For some reason, the non-competitive players irk me more than most of the other stereotypes on this list. It just feels not normal to have someone chuckle when they die and go, well, you got me, good one, again and again. Why don't they have a sense of competition? It's like nothing bothers them. Sure, I'd rather encounter a non-competitive player than a toxic one, but I also get annoyed if these people happen to end up on my team. They don't seem to try or have a sense of urgency to the match. It's almost like they're playing specifically for fun, and the part of me that wants to win can't handle that. If I missed any paintball stereotypes, let me know in the comments, and since everyone loves a good stereotypes video, I put another one on screen for you here, so go check it out. I'll see you over there.